Well, it is common to hear about giving this time of year, and it's also common to hear about trips to the doctor's office, unfortunately. Sickness can be as common as Christmas carols in the December months. Dr. Trudy Pieper says there are some simple and effective remedies that could cause some major pain and infection relief for you and your children. Dancy has more. Well, Dr. Trudy Pieper is back with us, and we're going to be talking about earaches. Unfortunately, this is the season, it seems, for earaches, whether it's from allergies or the weather. And um, earaches not only affect our youngsters, but they affect us as we go into adulthood. So, Dr. Pieper, I'm glad that you can be with us again because um, this is a problem that families see, and there are some other solutions other than antibiotics, right? Absolutely. Almost always, if you'll take your child or if you go to the doctor for an earache, they're going to give you antibiotics. Automatically, it seems. And um, studies have shown that the, the antibiotics really, they don't help the problem a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, there are some natural remedies that show much more progress in healing than the antibiotics. And they're easy to do. They're most of the time, they're things that you have around your home. Okay. And children have a tendency to have more problems because as they're growing, the tubes in their ears or the passages are so small that any amount of mucus, they've got a little cold, a little congestion, it backs up in their ears and causes pressure and pain. So we, especially for our little ones, we should learn how to help them feel better. Well, let me ask you that then, um, because I have known a lot of children who have had the tubes. Do you recommend that as a method of, of correcting the problem? Actually, we have an herb. It's called eyebright. And eyebright is the, the tube for the ear for the herbal community. Okay. Just by using eyebright, it has the same function as an ear tube. The eyebright goes in and it, it decreases the swelling in the eustachian tube. It also helps to maintain it so it does not get inflamed. So I have found in my practice over the years, the last 30 years, that if I can have um, my clients or my patients to be on eyebright, then that will, they will not need the tubes in their ears. Oh, that is wonderful. I, I would hope that many parents out there are listening to this because I'm sure that is not fun to have to take a child in so young for surgery. And with eyebright, you can get it as a tincture. So even if they're little, a tincture is a, in a dropper. It's a liquid form. Okay. And that's the best way because it, it's absorbed more quickly than even a capsule form. So you can get in capsules and you can open the capsules and put them in applesauce or yogurt or something for your child. But actually just go to the health food store, buy it in a tincture or a liquid form, put it in little dropper folds in their mouth and it'll go, it's absorbed immediately into their system. Wow. And it's great for kids and keeping those ears open. Okay, but as we said, children aren't the only ones who suffer right. um, with the earaches. So what do you suggest that adults do? There are several different things, and first of all, you might want to look at what's causing the ear. Is it because you have a, a cold or a flu and mm -hmm. you have congestion that's backing up, or is this something consistently that's happening? If that's the case, it could be an allergy. You might want to check and see. Usually the two culprits are dairy, cow's milk, and wheat. Mm -hmm. And by eliminating those from your diet, you can check to see if your earaches stop at that point, then you'll know it's allergy related. If it's not and you just have a tendency to have that, maybe your ear passage is a little smaller than, than the normal yeah. and, and mucus uh, will build up in there. There's several things you can do. Uh, the first one is garlic oil. Okay. And it's probably the first thing I go to unless there's severe pain. And if there's severe pain, we do onion. But we'll start with garlic oil. And it's a natural antibiotic uh, so that if there is any kind of bacteria or fungal growth in there, it will kill it. It's made very easily. You can make it ahead of time and, and store it for when you need it, or you can buy it at the health food store, already pre-made. And the key is just to warm it up to room to body temperature mm -hmm. and drop it in the ear and do that regularly, two or three times a day over a three or four day period, and you'll pretty much clear up the ear. It's easy to make. You just take one clove of garlic and you chop it up. You take some extra virgin olive oil, you pour over the top of it, just a little bit over the top of like a fourth of an inch, and then you're going to heat that over low, slow heat uh, for about 15 minutes. Then you're going to drain out the garlic from that. Add a little vitamin E, take a, a capsule of vitamin E, open that up and squirt it in there, shake it all up and then store it in a cool, dark place and you're ready to go for earaches. Okay. Is this something, you know, if you don't want to go through, you know, the steps that you mentioned, can you purchase it? Just Abs plain garlic oil? Absolutely. It's in every uh, health food store and it comes again with a little bottle with a dropper and you put the little drops in each ear and repeat that and you will solve the problem of the inflammation and any infection that may be in there. Yeah, because I, I, 
you know, I, I would think that many ear infections are also caused by um, a bacteria of right. some sort. So yes, you would want to make sure that is killed. <laughs> right. So it kills the bacteria, it also does the inflammation, and that's okay. where the pain and pressure comes in because it swells up. So you want to make sure the inflammation goes down, and the, uh, the garlic does that. It's a wonderful. Wow. And then onion juice. <laughs> So your ears smell real good then <laughs> after you have had garlic and onion juice. <laughs> you are, people are going to stay away, that is for sure. And that's okay. Maybe you need that so you're not going to get any more germs. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, onions are something people have, and it's, it's simple. You take a slice of an onion, and you slice it, and either steam it or bake it, and sprinkle a little water on top of it, and then you collect the juice off of that. Once it's cooked, it, the, the natural juices come out of the onion. You put that in a little container. And then you take a little dropper, you take some of that and put it in the ear. And for severe pain, if someone is in pain, this will almost immediately take the pain away. Really? Just from That's the garlic. That's worth it right there. Right from the onion juice will Im immediately relieve the pain. So it, it, if they're having pain, get the onion out. Okay. And then again, is that something that can be purchased or do you need to make that yourself? You know, I, I rarely see that in the okay. health food stores. Um, it's something so huh. simple to do. I don't know why someone hasn't made that. Maybe there is. Yeah. Um, you know, keep your eye out for it. Yeah. And I'm sure it's something online you can find. But yeah. if you don't have the time, it takes very little time to do it. So. It's funny, I just had an image, you know, you were talking about the garlic and onions, and I'm thinking, you know, my husband would walk in the door thinking I'd cooked a spaghetti <laughs> dinner for him, and no, honey, it's just something for your ears. So, <laughs> that is. It, it goes back to show that God gave us all the it's tools true. that we need in the foods yes. that we have around us. So, yes. uh, taking advantage of those is cost effective, it's fun, and it's something that you can you know, even teach your children how to do. Absolutely. Well, and again, there are other um, solutions as well, essential oils oils um it, every, uh, essential oil is very popular today and I like them a lot and again it's something that you can use and it will take the inflammation down mm -hmm. in the ear and will heal the ear and there's a uh, use lavender uh, thyme or tea tree oil are the three best the key is you have to um, mix it with the olive oil you can't put that directly into your ear it's oh. too strong and too powerful good to know so you're going to have one drop of the essential oil to ten drops of the oil okay and then you're going to use that as the as the carrier for your ear okay and echinacea as well we've heard of that for many years now. everybody knows echinacea it's the first line of defense for any illness um, it will definitely go in particularly for bacterial infections it, w it what it causes the white blood cells to increase in your body okay. and we know the white blood cells are the ones that uh, go after the invaders the viruses, the bacterials, the uh, microbes that come into our bodies. So it's always a good idea if you're feeling sick to go ahead and take echinacea. Okay, very good. Well, again, we need to remember the garlic and the uh, or garlic oil and onion juice. Those are the two that you would probably say work the best. They right? do, and then keep uh, eye bright in mind. Eye bright, that's for, true. For continual, constant earaches, particularly in children, it is the the tube that we use. Yes. Only it's an herb. Very good. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right. Back to you.